Pocket Pirates, The Great Cheese Robbery by Chris Mould Here we have the table of contents. As this is a longer book, it has multiple chapters. We will be doing two chapters at a time. The dedication for Captain William Fred Tippy. Here we have the characters. Button, Lily, the baseboard mice, Captain Crabsticks, Old Uncle Noggin, Jones, and Mr. Dregby. Chapter 1 The Old Junk Shop At the end of the street is an old junk shop. It's gloomy and shabby, and nothing ever happens there. At least, that's what most people think. Among the odds and ends and things of no use, a dusty ship in a bottle sits gathering cobwebs on a shelf. But when the world isn't watching, a tiny pirate crew comes out to explore. And when you're smaller than a teacup, a junk shop can be a pretty dangerous place. Chapter 2 Shelf Life Button, the ship's boy, had spent most of the afternoon exploring. He had climbed in and out of piles of books and boxes of this and that to see what he might find. He would even snatched a quick nap inside the old cuckoo clock. But on his way back down to the shelf, Button had caught the back of his jacket on an old picture hook, and now he was hanging helplessly on the wall. Oh, crumbs! Not again, he said out loud to himself. He looked over the shop. It was one of those perfect evenings. The moonlight was pouring in through the window and shone a silvery blue over the ship in the bottle. Everything had been calm until now. He tried to shake himself free, but it was no good. High above Button, something had awakened in the dark. Mr. Dregby, the house spider, was eager to make a snack out of Button. He'd had his six eyes on the boy for some time, and now he could see that his perfect meal was hanging there beneath him, waiting. The young ones are the juiciest, Mr. Dregby cackled in delight. Button heard a screeching sound above and looked up in alarm. A tangle of hairy long legs and beady eyes was rushing toward him. And then, all at once, he felt himself being pulled by the legs. He slipped clean out of his jacket and landed in a heap on the floor on top of his rescuer. She let out a muffled, yoop! It was his best friend, Lily, the youngest of the pirate crew. She jumped to her feet, waving a long darning needle in Mr. Dregby's direction. The spider scuttled grumpily back into the darkness above the shelf. Thanks, said Button as he straightened himself out. That was close. He looked up to see his coat was still hanging on the hook. You're not supposed to go wandering off on your own, Lily said. It's dangerous. I was looking for an adventure, Button replied. You shouldn't wish too hard for an adventure, said Lily. You just might get one. Much later, Button emerged from the ship feeling calmer. He climbed out of the bottle's glass neck and dropped down on the shelf. He took a good look around the shop. All was quiet again. From his pocket, Button pulled out a pirate flag, which he unfolded and tied between a candlestick and a pin in the wall. Captain's orders, Button explained to a nearby beetle. It's my job to fly the skull and crossbones and keep this shelf polished and scrubbed as properly as the deck of the ship. Pepperjack the leader of the mangy gang of mice who lived behind the junk shop baseboard was watching Button from a distance. His mouse ears pricked. He nodded to Blue Vinny and Fleabag, two of his gang, as they waited in the darkness. Their mean eyes shone back at him through the black. But Button couldn't see the mice. Instead, he took a seat on a small cotton reel and kicked off his buckled shoes. Jones, the ship's cat, was curled up nearby in a peaceful snooze. Lily was warming her hands at, at the stub of a lighted candle and quietly singing a sea shanty to herself. The captain of the ship, Captain Crabsticks, was having a rest on an open page of his favorite book, Treasure Island. He was tired after a day on the hallway shelf reading Domestic Pest Control and the Pocket Encyclopedia of Trees, which wasn't pocket-sized at all, especially not when you're two inches high. Arr, there ye are, me hearties, said old Uncle Noggin as he hobbled along to join his shipmates. He took a sip from a steaming bottle cap of hot chocolate and pulled his blanket over his knees. He was sitting on his favorite seat, a dish sponge. Are ye ready for a good old pirate story? 
Of course we are, cheered Lily. She and Bud loved old Uncle Noggin's pirate tales, even though they weren't quite sure they were true. Is it made up? Button asked. He was still undecided about the story of the cockroach who ate Captain Crabstick's parrot, and the one about the pirate who sailed to the land of next door in a margarine tub. It was always hard to tell. Never you mind, young Button, muttered old Uncle Noggin. Tonight I'm telling you the story of Blackbeard's ghost, and how he went searching for his missing head and found it bobbing around in the water like an empty barrel glowing in the dark. All eyes and ears were fixed on Uncle Noggin. The crew were so taken with the terrifying story of Blackbeard and his ghost, they weren't aware of a very real terror that lurked nearby. They didn't hear sharp claws scratching their way up to the shelf, or the whoosh of tails whipping through the air. They didn't see the sharp teeth and long twitching snouts that cast spiky shadows across the candlelit walls. And that was exactly what the baseboard mice wanted. And that ends chapter two, so we're going to take a small break. Join me next time for chapters three and four.